What's going on everybody, Travis with RAC Garage and in this video I'm going to be working on the 36 Ford Roadster, cutting out the wheel wells and starting to lay them out and hopefully start making something. Uh, who knows what happens but that's what I want to work on. Um, so let's get into it. First things first, I'm going to take some measurements while they're in place as um, so much as I can just so I can get a nice map of what the angles look like while they're in the car. Um, then I think since there's some rot that goes pretty much to the edge of the bottom of the bead or whatever you want to call this, the edge of the wheel well, um, I think I'm going to do just like I did on Ken's sedan delivery and cut this kind of no, I wouldn't say in the middle of the bead, but uh, I don't know. I'll have to do some measuring. I'll cut it up from here um, and make that arch. And that's also going to help me Well, when I cut the wheel well out, I'll have the whole thing even up until the bead. So I know exactly what size to make everything so it'll fit in the way it's supposed to fit in. Um, or at least try like hell to get make that happen but that's what I think I want to do so I'm gonna put some dicum on the edge here and kind of map out and measure where I want to cut scribe it and I will cut it with my body saw uh, it was the little air powered hacksaw or uh, sawzall whatever you want to call it um, but that's the route I think I'm gonna go and I also might make some templates of the shape here because the bead changes shape as it comes back. It's kind of like the sedan delivery where it kind of grew. Um, so it's kind of the same consistent of up until around here. And I wouldn't say it grows, it kind of flattens out. So this bead line comes around and down. So as it comes around, it loses this edge here and kind of it fades off into just a round profile. Uh, it still has this sharpish corner on the edge here where the fender meets up with it, but I should take some profiles. Um, I don't know, every so many inches and I'll, I'll mark it on the body so I'll know where to kind of reference back to. Thank you. 
All right, so I've done a lot of things. Um, I have cut out my template for the flat side, one of the flat sides of the uh, inner wheel well. It's not the whole piece. I don't have a piece of metal big enough, but it's gonna be no problem to add just a little tail section on there. I uh, might even have to add another one on the other side. Uh, I don't know how far down it goes. I do, it goes to the end, but not sure if it makes it. If it doesn't, I'll add a piece, no big deal. Um, but you saw me grinding this down to a nice, nice radius there. It's because I need to bend this at a radius. I'm doing half the radius. Um, and I'll do this flat top here and put a half a radius on there. Put a weld seam along the radius. Um, I'm not going to do it like I did Ken's and shrink the whole thing, make it in one piece. Uh, it's a lot of shrinking to do, and I'm going to test this way out and see how much faster it is. Uh, just kind of doing different techniques and seeing where it gets me. It'll all yield the same result, but time is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to do it quicker. Uh, so you saw me making some dies. And I have them here. I'll show you. It's a it's a regular old Pomax die, which is a, just a a radius. It's pretty easy. This lip right there. Uh, let me see. Like clips your metal in, and this will come down and smash it to that radius. So I didn't polish them, I just kind of sanded them down quick. Uh, I'm going to test to see if it works the way I want it to. And then I'll do it on this piece right along this edge. And it'll create me half of uh, a radius and then we'll go and do the other half. I think that came out pretty good. See if everything lines up. I do have a uh, Faye Butler, Faye Butler, Pomax die uh, alignment tool for when you make your own dies. It kind of clamps it here, clamps here, and uh, you can align your dies perfectly. But I don't have it yet, and I don't feel like waiting, so I figured it out with this crazy uh, magnet I have here. It lined it up pretty good. So, we'll see. Look at that, perfect, exactly what I wanted. So now, just gotta do it on the piece. Make sure I have it uh, fully against the backstop there while I go to do it. Might do it in a couple passes. I did this one just straight up one pass. Um, and didn't put any lines in it or anything. I don't have any high spots, because it'll show, it'll be like a line. Um, well, this is, where is that? Is that the bottom? Okay, that's down here. I might, yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. Before I continue, you did make a mark down here. See that? Um, so I'm going to soften this back edge a lot. I'm going to just like whoosh, grind it right down just so it doesn't do that. That's easy though.
All right, so what I got going on here, I got the uh, the inner wheel well kind of just clamped up in place. I don't know what it, it's a good angle to see the thing. Can I see it in there? So it's got it clamped here and clamped down there. And what I did, I took my Sharpie and drew a line where it meets the, on the floor and the subrail. And then I'm going to take it off. And then I'm going to put this detail in it. So it's really just a, uh, a step where it meets the subrail. That's pretty pretty simple. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, and then you know this. I think we're gonna do a sandwich plate for this, kind of like a uh, what do you call it, hammer form, uh, because I think it'll look better. And from factory, the beads kind of fade off like they would if it was in a bead roller, and you know I'm not partial to that. 
So I'd like to have a crisp uh, circle around it. Circle, half moon, kind of crisp end to the bead. And it's a pretty big bead. I don't know, I might be able to make it. We'll see. Let me, uh, I'll mess with a couple things, see if I can recreate it here. If not, we'll do a sandwich plate. But, it's in. I know I didn't make it in one piece, or two pieces, like this piece all the way, and then this piece all the way. Um, it's just, you know, I don't have pieces of metal big enough. And I feel like it's it's easier for me to mess something up. So I did most of it. I gotta do a tiny patch in here. And I'll do the end piece. And the end's kind of tricky, so it's kind of nice that I did I wasn't able to do the whole thing because it's I don't know, it gets real tricky in here, so it's it'll be nice to work on a really small piece for there. Um, and believe it or not, from factory. They do splice in a piece here. This is a factory seam. It's on both sides. So, um, not that it's gonna be exactly the same, because I'm gonna butt weld it and fully uh, fully weld it and smooth it out, but, you know, it's, it's not like factory didn't do that. They didn't have the tooling to make it all in one piece or something, maybe, from here up is the same as maybe a sedan, maybe, not sure. And then the end piece is different for a coupe and a roadster. Not too sure, but they did it for a reason. Um, hey, this has nothing to do with why I did it in two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, but I'm just rambling. Let's get to work.
I got the wheel well shaped up and I put the jog sort of step in there for the subrail to go up against and I marked out the crow's foot on the uh, inside of the wheel well and I had to make a tool because I can't do it with my bead roller because I put the uh, the top on and I don't have that tall of a throat on my bead roller to allow me to swing it around and it won't really come out that great on the bead roller because all I have is uh, step dies and my beading dies are really skinny so this is the contraption that I made so it's eh, essentially Okay, so here's the half inch hole, and this is a three quarter inch radius planching hammer die. And it fits perfectly inside this bead here. So that's gonna make the profile, and this is gonna create the edges and I needed something on the bottom here to prevent me just making a peak instead of a bead. So I found this round plate, cut a hole in it, and I tapered it, but I tapered it a little too aggressively. So this side did not rest on, uh, on here. And I actually needed a little more height because it was it was too much and this face and this face sorry wouldn't touch and for what I'm doing sorry one handed this kind of hard what I'm doing this needs to touch so it's going to come down kind of like that and it's going to make the bead there and make the defining edges on each side. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I might need to add some more uh, beads of weld. I put those on there so it would uh, kind of give me the height I need, but I feel like it wobbles around. I'm going to do a test piece and see how it comes out. But uh, yeah, that's how we're looking. And uh, yeah, it's very crude, but sometimes dyes don't have to look pretty and they don't have to be crazy complicated. If it works, it works. So. If I can get this to work, I'll eventually make a lower die that has, you know, that that radius that I need. To essentially make a beading die, but I had this die for my planting hammer, and it, I already had a receiver to receive it, so I just really needed to make this for the lower part, so we'll see what happens.
All right, so we got the beads in here, as you see. One got a little squirrely on me. Uh, kind of hit the sides with the English wheel to get those little dents out from the dies. I'll be, I should be able to sand it out. But uh, so the ends of the dies, ends of the beads, I want to crisp them up like, not like they would be from factory because they weren't, they kind of ended like this. So I took a piece of pipe that I had that the inside diameter was an inch and cut it in a cross section like that, softened these corners here and softened this outer edge. I kind of kept this inside uh, kind of sharp. I hit it with a file quick um, just to get rid of some burrs, but I want that crisp. So when you put it over the bead like this, you should be able to hit that with a hammer and it should put a defined edge on the end of your bead. Um, we'll see what happens. You can make them out of uh, punches, but if you don't have anything, a piece of pipe should work. So let's test it out. And so as you see, now it has a nice defined edge to that bead. So I'm going to do it with the rest of them. So after some hand work uh, connecting these, which was kind of a pain, and there's still some marks, my uh, my chisel was kind of kind of sharper than I wanted it to be. But I got the overall look I was going for. Um, I put it in the car already. I'll put it in again. Uh, but the this line meets up perfectly with the subrails, and it looks nice. Um, everything seems to fit good. This flange needs a little bit of tweaking, but that's really no big deal, deal at all. Um, so I think for now, I'm going to stop with this one and probably make a mirror image because I'm already in the mode of making these. So I'll probably make another one, uh, but that'll be probably on Monday. It's getting to the end of Friday and, uh, you know, my work week is almost over. So let's check the back side of this. This is what you'll see in the wheel well. I think it looks pretty good. I got no complaints. Uh, this one was a little funky. This was the one where it got away and the, the panel was going like this while the Pomax was on. Uh, so that got a little tweaked, so I straightened that out. Um, but yeah, other than that, it just needs some holes here and the edge of this flange needs to be trimmed. 
a little bit. So that'll get done at the end. So like I said, I'm gonna make a mirror of this and then start working on. All right, so let's put this, uh, let's put this inner wheel well in quick, the piece, not the full one, but. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, it needs a little bit of tweaking. So this needs kind of, I guess I'll do it when I weld it in. And it's like just on the two clamps, but this front's got to push in a little bit. And this back has to push out. Kind of just needs to be formed. It needs to go, like tweak it like that. But other than that, maybe stretch out this flange a little bit so it goes up more. I think I might have shrunk it too much. Um, at the same time, I don't know, maybe not. Because I did leave three-eighths there to be welded to. It's really hard to... Let me see if I can set you up here. You can see, you can see what needs to be done here. little bit of this so that's fine just needs a little form in it so um, trim the edge a bit but first I'm going to I think make the other side but I know it fits good it's it's going to work I'm not gonna need to make another one this test piece can be the final piece uh, so And this is looking good. That's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.